question that is asked over and over again on the internet is what is VBR1? What is VBR2? And should I use VBR1 or VBR2? What are the differences between the two? Let's get into it. VBR1 or single pass encoding means that your footage is being encoded on the fly with a single bit rate. Now that bit rate is whatever you set your target as. Whereas VBR2 or multi-pass encoding, that means that your footage is being processed twice. So you set the target bit rate for your video and then you have a secondary bit rate that you use in case you have some frames that need a little extra oomph. So why twice and what is exactly happening during that first pass? During the first pass, the program is looking at the footage, it's calculating, and it's saving that information in a log. Then during the second pass, it comes back and starts encoding the footage using the calculations that it saved in the log. What is that log file telling your software? It's telling your footage where in this video more bit rate is needed for the encoding. You know what, for a talking head video like this where not much is happening across the frame, I'm gonna use VBR1. I'm gonna set my bit rate at 56 and you guys let me know how that looks. Now you may ask why 56? Because I'm going off of YouTube's guidance for 4K videos that are shot in 24P. I'll put that on the screen so you guys can check it out. But again, let me know how that looks. Let me know your thoughts. Now real quick, let's go back to VBR1. This encoding is probably about 30 to 40% quicker, maybe 25. I don't know the exact calculations, but it's a little bit quicker than VBR2. A drawback, I guess, if you will, is that the software can't look ahead and see what's in front of it. So if you set the bit rate at something like 100, then it's just gonna encode 100, you know, all along the way. Whereas in VBR2, if you set the bit rate as 100 and then 200, then it's gonna encode 100 along the way. And if it encounters something where it needs some extra oomph, like I said, then it's gonna use 200 and then go back to 100 for everything else. So for VBR1, whatever you set that target bit rate is, everything is gonna get encoded at that number, which means also that you're gonna have some wasted bit rates in that video, resulting in a larger file. Now, like I said previously, VBR2 takes a little bit more time and actually you can set the file size for where you want it to be. So for example, if you were putting this video on a CD, you know that you can't go past a certain size. So you can type in what you want the total file size to be and then adjust your bit rates accordingly. And the program will distribute those bit rates accordingly based on its calculations. When would I use VBR2? I would use it when I had a video or a project where a bunch of action was happening across my frame. You know what? I think a good example is Game of Thrones. So there are multiple day scenes and multiple night scenes, and you know how black their blacks get in their video. So the black points in a dark cave needs a lot more information than a black point in broad daylight. That's a good use of VBR too, because you need different bit rates in these different settings. As I previously said, I am not a technical person. I'm just passing along information to you guys as I learn it. With that being said, this is not the in all be all. Feel free to drop down in the comments, talk about what you use, correct me if I'm wrong on something. I highly encourage it. As always, thank you for watching.